So continuing on with part two of the 1920s uh, political realm here before we get into culture. Science and religion become a big a big draw here in the mid-1920s. Modernist society versus traditional society in um, what was called the Scopes Trial or as some people called it, the Monkey Trial. Uh, fundamentalism is a movement focusing on the truth of the Bible comes along in the late 1800s basically taking everything in the Bible for fact and saying that that's what happened. Understand like Christians early on and up until the 1800s, they, it was a story. But now we're now these fundamentalists take it and say this stuff actually happened. Darwin's theory of evolution versus creationism is what this case is going to be about. And John Scopes, he was arrested. He was a science teacher in Tennessee. And Tennessee passed a, a state law basically banning the teaching of evolution. John, John Scopes continued to teach evolution, so he was arrested. Uh, his attorney would be none other than Clarence Darrow. He would be the most famous defense attorney of his time, of the, 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 early, the, the early 20th century. None other than, I believe, William Jennings Bryan had run for president three separate times, maybe four, uh, was the prosecutor, and he was a firm believer in fundamentalism. This would be the first trial broadcast throughout the nation on Chicago's radio, WGN. They covered the trial uh, every day. So, so oh, wait a minute. okay, yeah, okay, so. When uh, the, the, the whole trial, this is a, a big thing that happens in 1925, and um, the climax of the, the, the whole trial was when uh, Clarence Darrow asked the prosecutor, William Jennings Bryan, to take the stand as an expert on fundamentalism. So Darrow relentlessly questioned Bryan for hours about his beliefs, and this all came to a, a climax when uh, Brian did say the earth was created in 404 BC and Darrow asked if the earth had been created in six days and Brian's response was not six days on a 24 hour scale. So this finally admitted that the Bible might be open for interpretation in different ways. All that being said, Scopes was found guilty and he's fined $100. And if you read here later, the Tennessee Supreme Court reversed the verdict on the technicality. However, the law did stay on the books banning the teaching of evolution in Tennessee uh, taught, uh, taught um, creationism for many, many years after. Prohibition. It's the 18th Amendment. The night has passed in 1920 and it bans uh, alcohol. Basically, uh, it bans the making, the selling, and the consumption of alcohol. To reinforce this amendment, Congress passed the Volstead Act, which granted the federal and state governments the right to enforce prohibition. And as you see, many people resented this new law uh, as a regular part. It basically regulated their behavior, and people don't like that. The government never really tried to enforce it. This is a you're trying to enforce a you're trying to enforce a custom. And, you're, and part of the culture, a social thing, and it was hard to enforce. So it does give rise to speakeasies, which are bars that would sell alcohol. But as you see here, you had to have a password and there was usually somebody at the door. And uh, if you didn't know the password, then they wouldn't let you in to kind of keep the police out bootlegging becomes a big deal and uh, actually comes from um, whiskey smugglers. They would smuggle uh, alcohol in their bootlegs through um, Canada from Canada into the U.S. up around Michigan. So bootlegging, as you see, is a rule. It's illegal production and distillery, distilling of alcohol. And when you think of bootlegging, you think of the mountains here in the eastern part of the U.S., but bootlegging was going on a lot of different places. So also with Prohibition, you get the rise of organized crime and one of the most famous crime bosses, Mr. Al Capone. I believe it was 1928, 
think he made I think he made sixty million dollars uh, tax free in his criminal criminal organization. So organized crime helped in the uh, help in the uh, smuggling and trafficking of alcohol. It's a billion dollar industry in the 1920s terms. The 21st Amendment will be passed in 1933. One of the first things Franklin Delano Roosevelt does, and he repeals the 18th Amendment. Uh, this would be a mo this would be a victory for modernists and a defeat for traditionalists. So, if you look at the Scopes trial, you'd say that would be a victory for traditionalists and a setback for modernists. So, here's some pictures, and we are finished.